the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with My brothers and sisters, we gather this day to open our hearts and our minds to the Spirit, the divine Spirit of God's love and wisdom. Let us now humbly acknowledge our sins and seek the mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who through grace of adoption, chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book, the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let's arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to see us, he can stay there. Some time later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, good morning, everyone. It's quite clear that the power of God's word that is proclaimed to us as we assemble as his people is a word designed to invite us to appreciate and deepen our understanding of the act of kindness, the act of hospitality. In both the first reading uh, and the second book of Kings, we have a, uh, uh, a woman of influence, a, a, a family of influence that provide uh, hospitality to the itinerant uh, 
prophet Elisha. And that first encounter was to offer a cold drink. Uh, but because Elisha would pass by frequently and uh, being a man of God, uh, proclaiming uh, the word of God, uh, that initial relationship that started with uh, the host, the, the, the family offering a cold drink of water, uh, developed and grew to offering a full meal. Eventually, we hear at the end of the reading that they actually build a, a room on the roof of their house to provide shelter for Elisha. And if we would continue to read on through the uh, rest of that, uh, that chapter of 2 Kings, we would find out that eventually, not only does Elisha, uh, as we hear today, that uh, prophesies that the, they would bear a child, but that prophecy comes to bear. They do have a son, and the son grows and matures to be a, a working partner with his family and his father. And that son grows ill and uh, it actually dies, and Elisha is called back by this woman because of their friendship, a friendship that was initiated with offering a cold drink of water. The prophet, the holy man of God, comes and breathes new life into this son who was uh, given as a gift from God because of that act of hospitality. And so as we hear in today's gospel, uh, Jesus giving the mission to the apostles uh, as they went forth to proclaim the good news, and says that if anyone gives a cup of cold water to someone because he is a disciple, will not lose his reward. Because Jesus is empowering the disciples to be ambassadors of divine love be recipients of hospitality because Jesus understands the power of what a simple act of hospitality are the seeds and the beginning of a relationship that grow and mature. Just think in your own life. If you're sitting here with a spouse, perhaps for many years, if you're sitting here not only with a spouse and perhaps even a child, that reality that you now enjoy began by somewhere in the past, by a simple act of recognition, of being touched by our heart to extend kindness and love, to ask for a date, to perhaps ask for a conversation. That initial act of love grew and matured because that is the power of love. So I came and reflected upon this reality and also understand that we hear today's gospel when Jesus seems to say some very harsh words at the beginning. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Or whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You to stop and think about that. Jesus is not talking about the notion of father and mother loving son and daughter, but rather he's talking about the tendency to cling, for a mother and a father to love their son and daughter so much, not allow them to grow and become the person God created them to become. And so too, as we hear sons and daughters loving father and mother more than me, so too a son and daughter must realize they can't stay in the home and love mommy and daddy forever. That they have to evolve, they have to move forth and to embrace the future that God has given them. So important to interpret that passage in that spirit. Because certainly our Lord wants us to have solid family relationships. And as I also prayed on this and came across an, a very interesting uh, take on the notion of love that is created by those acts of kindness that mature and blossom into full-fledged relationships. There's a writer named Ida Calhoun and kind of writing a memoir uh, entitled Wedding Toast That I'll Never Give. Uh, she writes, a year and a half ago, my husband Neil and I bought a place in the country. 
We hadn't been in the market for a house, but our city apartment is only 500 square feet, and we kept admiring this lovely blue house. We drove by every time we visited my parents. It turned out that this house was shockingly affordable, and so we now own a house. We bought furniture, framed pictures, and put a badminton net. We marveled at the change that had come over us. We who were now these backyard grilling, property tax paying, shuttle cocking batting people, how did we become this? Because when we met in our 20s, Neil wasn't a man who would delight in lawn care, and I wasn't a woman who would find such a man appealing. And yet, here we were, avidly refilling our bird feeder and remarking on the cardinals that visited. My husband, Neil, who hadn't hammered a nail in all the years I'd known him, now had opinions on bookshelves and curtains and loved going to the hardware store. He whistled while he mowed. He was like an alien. Now in this new situation, I was an alien too. One who knew when to plant bulbs and how to use a crock pot and who, newly armed with a CPR and first aid certification, volunteered at a local camp. Our alien selves were now remarkably compatible. Several long married people I know have said this exact line. I've had at least three marriages. They've just all been to the same person. I'd say Neil and I have met, have had at least three marriages, our partying 20s, our child-centric 30s, and home-owning 40s. Each of us in this church have grown and matured and evolved. Such is the grace and the love of God who has provided this gift of life that we cherish. We all have relationships not only that have endured the test of time, we've also had relationships that have broken, that have failed. But yet God calls us to heal and to move forward. We've had a relationship with the church. Not only those of us who are assembled, but there's others who have used to belong to this church, used to have a wonderful relationship with this church, but at some juncture in time, perhaps a difficult situation or somewhere along the line, they were disillusioned by our parish, they have fallen away. But yet, we need to continue to be people who believe in the power of Christ, the power of love, and the conviction to stay faithful and to be models and ambassadors of hospitality, of kindness. And let God take those small acts and by his grace, his mercy and blessing, allow those first moments of love to flourish, to blossom and grow. All of us in our own particular situation are at a juncture in our life. We either moving into a new chapter or saying goodbye to an old chapter. Children are going off to college. Uh, young adults are moving out of the household. Uh, spouses who have known each other for many years are perhaps growing and developing in a new and exciting way. Let us give each other the space necessary to allow the grace, the spirit of God to bring forth the life, the energy, and the power of the Holy Spirit he has entrusted to us. So let us continue to pray that we will be faithful to the Lord, faithful to those we love, as well as faithful to those who come to us seeking shelter, seeking kindness, seeking hospitality. For God will make those relationships powerful. 
They will connect with our church. They will connect with God from above. Because when we demonstrate our willingness to love, God will do the rest. of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With grateful hearts, we now come to the Heavenly Father with these prayers and offer them on our own behalf and on behalf of the people of God throughout the world. Our response will be, hear us, O Lord. For the church throughout the world, through the witness and devotion of her people and ministries, may she always be a source of welcome to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord for leaders of nations, that they may work to foster a greater understanding and spirit of cooperation when seeking to resolve conflicts. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all who are sick, who are, who are nearing the end of their days, may they know the peace of Christ and the comfort of friends and family. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For our parish community, May we reflect the goodness of the Lord by our dedication to serve those around us. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all who put themselves in harm's way to defend, protect, and rescue those in need, may they know that we hold them in our hearts and prayers that God may keep them safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all the parishioners living and deceased, of Our Lady of Grace and our partner parish, St. Benedict. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Almighty and eternal God, giver of life and salvation, hear and answer the prayers we now humbly ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. As we present our gifts, please join in singing hymn number 622, The Summons, 622.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Father's blessing in our midst, we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received Fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that, bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 431, Blessed Assurance 431.